So you started playing music at around the age of three or five, as I read? No, I started uh, at the age of three, but, but it was just, you know, um, my, uh, I had an uncle, and uh, my uncle, he played uh, a Puerto Rican instrument called the cuatro, C-U-A-T-R-O, and I used to accompany him on a tin cracker can. And uh, that's how I learned about music. And uh, at the age of four, I learned to play the harmonica. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I left Puerto Rico at the age of five. And uh, when I got to New York, two years later, at the age of seven, I learned to play the accordion. And I played that from seven to about 14. But in the, in the interim, uh, I got involved with learning to play the guitar at the age of nine. So was there, was there a feeling that music is the thing for you to do, or was it the thing you had to do? Or did you fall in love with music, I, or did it come well, along I, the way? No question that I fell in love with it. And I think God pushed me into it. And I think the reason God pushed me into it is so that I wouldn't be like a lot of blind um, people who wind up begging on the streets or doing something that wasn't dignified. At least music is dignified. But you were also doing something called pass the hat when you were young, like play. Well, that was because of the uh, nightclub rules in the village. That wasn't because I was blind. Yeah. Um, since they couldn't pay the performers, they would pass the hat after each show. In, in one of your interviews, you say that somebody asks you, what is it like to be an idol? And you say it's kind of scary. What's the scary part about being an idol? Well, I think for me, when it happened, the scary part was when you have all these um, women chasing you, wanting a part of you, you know, uh, wanting to, to shake your hand, pull your hair, whatever. You know, you saw, you saw Beatlemania, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's what it was like for me in 1967 uh, when I record, started recording the Spanish torch songs, the boleros. Mm -hmm. And uh, I couldn't leave my hotel room. Uh, I, had, I had all these women chasing me. Of course, now that I've gotten older, they don't chase me so much. But what keeps you grounded? Because you're talking about a, a, a world of fantasy. I mean, women chasing you and being on the stage and being idolized and being on the Hollywood well, Walk of Fame. To, what you, keeps you, you grounded? Have to, you have to stay grounded and realize that it's only, it's only for a while. Uh, and, uh, and if you have talent, you'll remain. And I've been very lucky that I have remained all these years. People still want to hear me play. Um, when I do concerts, people come, and that's amazing for an, for uh, an artist because a lot of artists, um, a lot of artists that that I, I used to know are no longer relevant. And I don't know. God has made it possible for me to still be relevant. Everybody still knows who Jose Feliciano is, and if I'm promoted very well. I will do well in concerts. I always find that I don't do, let's say, as well as I should when I'm not promoted very well, when promoters take it for granted that just because I'm Jose Feliciano, I'm going to sell tickets and they don't have to promote. You always meet up with people who admire you before your concerts or after your concerts. What's the greatest compliment <clears throat> that you ever had from well, someone? I, I think the greatest compliment is when they come backstage and and they tell you that they've been your fan for a long time and and you shake hands with them and and uh, and if you've if your music has made a difference in their lives that's the greatest pleasure of all and the greatest critique Excuse the, me? Gr the greatest critique the greatest i don't know what do you mean the greatest critique something that mean? they didn't like about you 
Well, you know, that you, made you be better. You know, people mm -hmm. can't like everything about you. Yeah. You know, it's like anything. You know, like, oh, it, you know, it's like anything. Um, you can't be perfect. You know, and and even God, who professes to be perfect, <laughs> has some imperfections too. So, so uh, no, I'm fine. You you decided. Well, actually, I don't think you decided. You actually were f were forced to quit school at 17. Do you regret it? Do you <coughs> see no, your not, life? No, no, not really. Because traveling around the world and doing what I'm doing, I think I got a better education than by sitting in a classroom and falling asleep. There is also a school in New York named after you. Can you tell me a few words about how that happened? And well, it was just a school that. Um, I was just honored. Uh, they they wanted to name name it after me, and that's how it came about. You approach a lot of genres of music. One of them, you dedicated an album to the mariachi music. What's the? I did two albums of Mexican music. Yeah. Uh, because I like I like those kinds of music. I did an album also of bachata, uh, which I like. <clears throat> I also did. Uh, an album of Elvis Presley's music, 12 songs, an album called The King. Now, recently, I have done an album that's uh, produced by my manager uh, of uh, music by Mozart. And uh, if you want to know anything further about it, I suggest you talk with him. All right. How do you deal with the people you cover, the, the artists you cover, I mean, what's your relationship with them? I don't know about Mozart because he's dead, but I, I, was, I wanted to ask you about the Light My Fire cover. How did the guys from The Doors react to this? I, or how did I you... never knew because he died a few years after that. 71, yeah. I never met him, but um, the rest of the group, um, really, they complimented me. They said that I made light my fire for them a standard. And the other guys you're covering? I mean, how do you decide to make a cover of a song? Well, if I like the song, I don't even, if I like a song, I'll cover it. And I also think to myself, I could do this better than the original. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes me cover a song. You said in an interview that when you write your music, most of your music, you you see it in your dreams. What's your latest dream? Well, some, some of it. I mean, like if, uh, if I'm writing an original tune, I'll, uh, I might dream of a melody or something like that, or maybe uh, a melody will come and then I'll work on the lyrics, or sometimes a lyric comes to me and I'll work on the melody. It all depends. Mm -hmm. You know, there is no formula. I know, I'm sure, for example, that when the Beatles wrote their songs, they sat around jamming together and, and the songs came, you know. There is no formula for writing except uh, what comes to you. Who are the people you are jamming with in your studio? I mean, the people you're... you're, you're well, I haven't been jamming with too many people because I've been too busy just trying to get myself uh, together, um, but I've jammed with uh, Santana, I've worked with him, I've worked with Bill Withers, uh, I worked with John Lennon, um, oh my goodness, you know, I worked with, with some of those people, Joni Mitchell, um, I haven't done, as I said, too much jamming because I've been busy doing other things. If you were to describe John Lennon, the working man you were jamming with, what would you say about him? I would say that uh, John Lennon was a great artist. He was a great writer. Uh, and he was, uh, I'm sure, a lot of fun. I never really got to hang with him. But, uh, but John was a nice guy. And uh, every December 8th, it's a sad day, I think about him, and it makes me sad that while John Lennon is no longer, uh, the bastard that put him, that shot him, is still alive. And that, that's a real miscarriage of justice in my, in my eyes. 
What about Johnny Mitchell? Johnny Mitchell's a nice lady, very talented. She, um, she's very talented. She writes great songs and, uh, and I enjoy her songs. Could you talk about a, an artistic community in the U.S.? Are you a community? Talk about what? An artistic community. Are you like a community of artists, a family of artists? And if you are a family, who's part of your family? <laughs> well, not really. I mean, I live in an artist um, community, but, but I never see a lot of the people that live there. Like um, Keith Richards is a neighbor of mine, but I haven't run into him since I moved there. Uh, other people like um, Christopher Walken, uh, Paul Newman used to live there. Uh, a few people, but you never run into them for some reason. You, you came at a very early age, you came from Puerto Rico to the United States of America. Did you ever feel like you were a foreigner? Did you ever um, feel as a foreigner? Or, no, because you lived in New well, York. Well, I did maybe. in the beginning, like anybody. If I came to live in Romania, I'd feel like a foreigner. I can't speak the language. And even though the people are very nice, I would feel like a foreigner because I, if you can't speak the language, you are a foreigner in a sense. And if you don't want to be a foreigner, then you better learn the language. <coughs> so when I came to America, I made it my business to go to school and I learned English and I didn't feel like such a foreigner anymore. You were talking to me before the interview started about your concert in Romania a few tens of years ago, like 40 years ago. What was it like then? Well, um, we, you and I, for example, couldn't have the conversations that we're having now on TV. It was very tight. Uh, you know, Romania was part of the Iron Country. Uh, whoever was in power at the time ruled with a dictatorial uh, thumb and uh, the people um, didn't seem happy and that's why for example when an artist like me came they would run to me uh, because the music that I did made them forget for a while the kind of world that they were living in and I was happy to provide that for the people and uh, when I left Romania, I left sad and happy. Sad because of what they were going through, but happy that I could bring a little love, love and relief to them. What made you go to a concert then in a country like that? Well, I've never, you know, I was asked to, uh, to come and do a concert. And I, I said to myself, why not? I've never been there. I'd be missing out if I didn't go. And I'm glad I came. And what made you come to Romania now? <laughs> well, I wanted to see. Uh, I heard that it's changed, and I wanted to come and see that for myself. If you were to tell us a few words about your concert tomorrow, what would be those words? <laughs> it's going to be a happy one. <laughs>